in a certain amount of, uh, of time, the end of the world is going to be, you know, coming. It's kind of inevitable. Mm-hmm. So then the film kind of becomes like a ticking clock where they're trying to figure out how to um, how to write this this song, you know. And the catch in this film is it's a kind of a legacy thing where they're now they have daughters and their daughters are, are just like them and they kind of said they, they set up this what could be a great uh spin-off of you know a passing of the torch uh maybe you know i don't think i'm giving away too much for you i know you haven't i don't think you've seen it yet right no 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 yet. but i know i know that that was one that was you know pretty badly anticipated yeah. At one point. And Samara Weaving is, is one of the daughters, right? Yep. And, uh, yeah, she's great, as usual. Um, Drop the mic uh, podcast fan favorite. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I can't say enough good things about the, the film. You should be able to... I think it's just a couple dollars to rent on Prime or iTunes, mm-hmm. or on iTunes wherever you, you rent movies. Yeah. Um, uh, or you can pick up the physical copy. I think it might be just maybe fifteen dollars, a little under fifteen dollars. Not not too expensive. I'm waiting for the uh, the triple triple feature mm-hmm. Blu-ray, which is an you know it's gonna it's gonna come sooner or later. Um, I do have the first two on DVD, but I'm looking to upgrade those. I think that would be appropriate. Mm-hmm. Can I ask a question and you don't have to answer if you don't want to? No, go ahead, man. Who's uh, who's the new George Carlin since he is sadly not with us? I'll answer that because it's a couple. So they actually used, um, uh, how do you say, like somehow they, they digitized him. And so you just see his, like what they did at Coachella with Tupac, uh-huh. where it's like a hologram of Carlin, they they bring um, his uh, his daughter in for this film, but they, you do see you do see Carlin for like a a little bit. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, that that makes sense. I was just I was wondering because I know that George Carlin is is long since passed away. And, yeah, you know there wasn't going to be Rufus wasn't really going to be in it, so I was just kind of curious as to as to if he got replaced or how they how they did that in the universe yeah they bring his his daughter is kind of doing the as you know continuing what he was doing and she's like trying to get them you know get the guys to do what they need to do and help them make the song and everything so it's kind of passed on to her okay yeah thanks for answering the question You're not ruining anything for me i was just kind of curious like how what what uh what way they chose to handle that yeah yeah yeah, because he was he's always a great uh, scene stealer in, in those films. Oh yeah, definitely. He is greatly missed, for sure. Uh, he's one of your favorite comedians, right? Love him, love him. Saw him half a dozen times in person. Uh, back when VHS was still a thing, I had all of his his comedy uh, HBO shows. Mm-hmm on a VHS dub or two because there were, there were so many of them. But uh, I'm going to have to try to upgrade those. I have all those albums digital, like audio. Yeah. So I can listen to them whenever I want, but I don't have, you know, the actual HBO special, which I'm not sure I really need. But sometimes you do because he makes a lot of funny faces and a lot of funny poses while he's uh, delivering his punchlines. His body language is always pretty funny, but even even without that, just hearing the comedy uh, when I listen to him, uh, I, he was my favorite comedian, and I was really bummed when he passed away. Especially seeing like everything that kind of happened in the years since, kind of wondering how he would how he would perceive those and and address those in his comedy. Yeah, he was very much like Dave Chappelle, where he's kind of giving you, you know, life lessons. Yeah, it, 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 he's, especially in his later years, he got, like, pretty socially conscious and, you know, would tell you, hey, this was history and this was wrong and, you know, we should be learning from it. I mean, 
one of his first uh like the first time i saw him was maybe a month before 9 11 mm -hmm. and then later that fall he had the hbo special of that show but it was different because now he had to address 9 11 and he did it in a in a you know pretty somber way but also mind the comedy that was that was there so i was i would always be curious you know how he would address you know everything that's happened since he he died in 2008 especially the trump years jesus <laughs> i always remember his little uh his little cameo in in strikes back <laughs> the un <laughs> the unwritten book of the road <laughs> one of the few funny parts in that movie <laughs> Which is funny because I think I think we saw him that night uh, down at, at Humphreys, and then you know working in working in the, the theater, we we went in because that was like the premiere that night. Oh wow, really? Af yeah. Afterwards, we went in and you know we ran we ran the movie, and then we all went crazy when George Carlin popped up because we had just seen him a couple hours prior. Also, I don't want to, real quick, I don't want to leave out William Sadler as death because he rules. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, yeah he makes a return, and he's, he's just as good. He's so funny. This is the second time Sadler's been mentioned in this particular podcast show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Today. <laughs> Let's talk about The Way Back. You, you oh, saw, yeah. You got to see that one, right? Yeah, I did because it was on HBO. That was, I think, that was one that came out the week before everything. But you and I were kind of being very cautious. Yeah, because things things were starting to look like they could be pretty dangerous. So I think you and I had both made the decision. Uh, I'm not going to go to the theater to watch this. I'm a little, I'm a little scared at this point. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then it. Um. Did you watch it on when it hit HBO? Because it hit, it actually hit HBO fairly quickly. Yeah, um, because it was released back in February, right? March, March, the first weekend in March. Oh wow! Okay, it, uh, it got released, and then uh, because everything had shut down, and because it was a Warner Brothers film. Which I think we need to have a discussion about here soon, because it was a Warner Brothers film, um, and HBO is owned by by Time Warner or whatever Warner. I think it's Warner Media now. Because mm -hmm. there's different tiers of the Warner Brothers, right? Yeah, uh, because it's owned by Warner Brothers. I think that's why it hit HBO so quickly. It was it was probably like within a, a few months. Mm -hmm. It, it was on HBO and I, I kept missing it and didn't think to record it until uh, a few weeks back but yeah I sat down and watched that the other night on your recommendation so what'd you think man it's a good movie it's a good movie I, I the the trailers made it seem like you know the alcoholic and then he kind of gets this second chance at, at redemption with coaching the basketball team but it's kind of um, it's kind of backwards I guess from that the yeah, it, um, because it shows him drinking throughout the movie, and he actually does pretty well while he's coaching the team. But it's it's not until uh, something happens. It, it turns out it's kind of like a sneaky childhood cancer movie too. Yeah, that was uh, you know a little a little sad and um. A little close to home not the childhood cancer thing but just the cancer thing um and something happens that sets him off and he starts really going on the bender again and then i was surprised because there's like the basketball game i think the game to propel them into the playoffs because he whips the team into shape they're, they're terrible he whips them into shape they are playing this game that's going to propel them into the playoffs and that's the whole that whole scene and that whole sequence is shot like this is going to be the climax of the movie but then you know that ends they win the game they're going to go to the playoffs and then you look at the, the the running time and it's like oh there's still like another 40 minutes left in this movie 
where are they going to go? And the final act of the film actually deals with his alcoholism for real. And that was kind of that was kind of a surprise because I didn't really expect it to to go uh, to that length. Yeah, I like to dive that deep. Into yeah, that. yeah, because it he was obviously yeah obviously had a drinking problem, but as you can see, like as he gets deeper into the coaching career with this team, he, he kind of quits it. Even at the bar, he's you know not interested in drinking anymore. But then that that uh, incident sets him off, and he. he drinks himself stupid and shows up and uh, gets let go from the job and then the last act deals with the alcoholism so I was I was surprised that it went in that direction not not that it was a bad thing I was just kind of surprised because obviously the movie had set it up to be like the redemption the redemption story redemption story of him coaching the uh, the basketball team but it was it was good. It was it was a really good movie. Yeah, it's sad that um, it didn't like not enough, not a lot more people were able to see it in the you know w- with the theatrical experience at least. Yeah, just just shit timing, and that was a movie that I wanted to see and was willing to go, and then right around the time it came out is when you know COVID started being a real thing to worry about. It was like mm, I don't know if I really want to go into a theater right now with uh you know with other people. Mm-hmm. So missed it. Smart move on your part as well, and uh, was able to catch it on cable. I was glad that was that was like my weekend was uh, plowing through some of these movies that I know were on HBO that you had, you had watched and said that you would really you would really enjoyed. I should check them out, so I did. Also speaking, you said um, that the cancer thing hit home. I thought that the the alcoholism thing, him taking on this role, was was pretty courageous because he's uh, obviously a recovering uh-huh. alcoholic and battled uh, similar things in his life more, even more recently. And uh, so it was, I don't know, it was kind of touching to see how how he kind of tackled this this role. And I felt like he was so Affleck is a fucking beast in this, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, the way, just to, even his interactions with the with the team, and how you know, like the little details, like how he won't, uh, because they're like um, their school is like a religious, like uh, it's like it's like Catholic high school, yeah. And so they're they're trying to keep them like um, from cussing and doing these things, and then the, him as a coach is like the ex- <laughs> is the exact opposite. And so yeah, on the on the sideline, uh, <laughs> you know, throwing out all kinds of, of f bombs and curse words and yelling at the refs. I'm glad that they were they uh, they went for it and made that R and and allowed that to happen because I feel like it it, it differentiated it from the Coach Carter and like the yeah. the movies that we've seen over and over again, you know? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. You and you, you mean you can predict that story arc a mile away. Mm-hmm. And this was this was you know, I, I knew from the trailer that you know him and his wife were estranged. I knew that there was, you know, some some tragedy because I believe that was in the trailer. I didn't know how deep that tragedy went, and I didn't know how deep they were going to get into the alcoholism. So it, it it was it was unexpected the the turns that that it takes. Uh, a couple I want to shout out that I, that I watched for the first time that were great. Speaking of another western, uh, the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. Mm-hmm. With uh, Brad Pitt as as uh, Jesse James and Casey Affleck as Robert Ford was a movie that for some reason I, I had missed. I never I never saw it, and then you know going through and watching a bunch of stuff uh, over the the spring and the summer, watched that and was blown away by how good it was. It's. I think I asked you if you had watched it. Have you watched it since I asked you? No, it's still on my list to check it out. It's uh, it's gorgeous. The the cinematography, I believe that was Roger Deakins as well. I was just gonna say that, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and because I didn't know that because the as as before the beginning doesn't have a traditional credit sequence, 
it just kind of starts. 